Home brewers regularly talk about boil off evaporation rates. But do you ever wonder how much water evaporates during a mash? I did, so I did some experiments to find out. If you'd like to see what I did, stick around and I'll show you. Hello everyone and welcome back. We're here again to talk about mash ton evaporation rates. That's right, mash ton, not boiler kettle. Something that uh, I've found little to nothing about online anywhere uh, up until me making this video. If I miss something, please let me know down in the comments. But this all started in my interest in this topic started about a year ago when I got uh, the Spike Solo, right? Um, it's uh, open mash type system. Uh, you, uh, the way it is, it's like a basket that fits in the kettle. It's like a brew in a bag, but it's brewing a basket basically, right? And those instructions at that time uh, did not have you put the lid back on the top of the kettle. It was uh, open mash, right? And, and there was a reason for that. Uh, you want to keep an eye on the mash because uh, it could clog and possibly overflow, right? So if you follow the user guide to the letter, it does not have you put the lid on. So I brewed a few batches on here, uh, or actually more than a few batches on it, and uh, it turns out that my numbers, my pre-boiled gravities were a little off, and the volumes I collected too. And I chopped it up to a new system, new method, which it is, right? But after several brews and having sort of a, a trend that I've noticed, it got me thinking, uh, and then soon after that, I got the Blickman Brew Easy, and uh, brewed on that, and had a similar result. And the Brew Easy also, uh, if you follow its user guide to the letter, does not have you put the lid on for during the recirculation step, which I don't know why you can't, because it has an auto sparge arm that keeps it from overflowing, or the spike didn't. But following the instructions to the letter, you don't put the lid on. So I had the same problem. Um, my numbers were off, and my pre-boil numbers, right? And this happens for, other, for a variety of reasons, some of which I've already covered in past videos, but this time there was something new at play. See, my old DIY cooler systems never had this problem because once you put the grains and mix it all together inside the mash tun and close the lid for that hour, um, it, no, there was no evaporation at all. It's just, it was all self-contained inside the cooler. So when you open the cooler and water out of there, you uh, get the volumes you, that you would expect from your recipe software or your brewing software, right? So something was different between these new, two new systems. So I, I thought I'd do a little experiment and figure out um, if there really, I mean, there is an evaporation rate with mashing, especially the open style. You can't deny it. The, the, the time to heat up the water, um, there's time for some evaporation there. There's uh, evaporation if you don't cover it, right? Um, but how much? Is it really important? Um, is it really a contributing factor? So it was killing me. I wanted to know. But before I got to the experiment, I just did a little background reading, got uh, refreshed on uh, some of the science books I have and, and things about evaporation rates and what causes them. And I got some formulas I use in one of my profes pro professional engineering handbooks that I have, as well as a lot of resources online on this topic. So I wanted to know what was affecting, in general, what affects evaporation rates so I can actually calculate and predict them on my brewing spreadsheet for you, and for myself, of course. And there are several variables at play, making calculating this relatively difficult because it depends on a whole lot, a variety of uh, things like uh, open surface area of the mash tun or your kettle. So the open surface area um, exposed to the air. How much applied heat are you applying to that vessel? The water temperature or the work temperature, the air temperature, convection currents, air, just air, ambient air blowing and drifting through your room and humidity. Um, in particular, the humidity near the surface of the liquid. And all these variables can change by the time of year, your environment, the day, the hour of the day. Making predicting and estimating this through a calculation, not so practical. So I decided to just go ahead and measure it on a particular day. Again, uh, it's January where I live in the Midwest. It's cold out, it's dry out. My garage is uh, in the low 60s with the heat on. So. Uh, it's not representative of, a, of what I'd get on an evaporation rate for a brew day on a summer day, let's say, but I gave it a shot. So what I did is start with the Spike Solo. I started with 10 and a half gallons of 150 degree water in the kettle and maintained that for one hour. I measured it again and came up with 10.3 gallons. So that's 0.2 gallons, almost a quarter gallon lost in that hour, which in quarts is a 0 0.8 quart loss. Not a lot. It's not, uh, it wasn't three quarts, it wasn't five quarts, it was almost a quart. One quart, okay. 
Not a big deal for a 10 gallon batch, but if I was brewing a five gallon batch and still had that, uh, that loss, uh, it kind of starts to eat in on your pre-boiled volumes. Then it was on to my Brew Easy. Now, uh, my Brew Easy is, they label it a 10 gallon system, but it's actually a 20 gallon kettle similar to the spike. The dimensions are almost the same. All right, uh, that's just the way they label them. Spike uses the 20 gallon moniker, which uh, means 10 gallon batches basically, and the Blickman uses the 10 gallon batch size to indicate your final batch size, but it's a 20 gallon kettle, if that hopefully makes sense to you. So I ran the experiment again. 10 and a half gallons of 150 degree water, maintained it at 150 degrees for an hour, measured it while still at 150 degrees and got 10.3 gallons, which again came up to be a 0.8 quart per hour loss. And again, that doesn't seem like a lot, especially for a 10 gallon batch, one quart, uh, not, not a big deal, right? But that's one hour only. What if you were doing a step mash where your mash can go for two hours? Because uh, the time it takes to ramp up your temperatures from the lower step temperatures to the higher ones is also time that it's sitting there uh, e uh, evaporating, right? So if your mash goes out to two hours, that's almost two quarts now. That's a half gallon. And that's starting to get into some real numbers now. So as a result of my findings, I decided to update my brewing spreadsheet out there. The 4.0 version is, in, is still in beta. It's being tested by some of you. Thank you so much for your time for doing that for me, by the way. Uh, you helped me find a number of bugs on it and I'm making changes and a new beta version will be out soon. Uh, on my latest upcoming spreadsheet, I do have a new field there for, uh, for inputting your mash, your mash ton evaporation rate. And that, again, that's going to vary depending on the time of year, the day, the temperature, and, and, and your equipment. But once you do this experiment and get a number to start with, it's better than not having a number at all. And it gets you closer to your results. So that new value on my spreadsheet then will adjust the starting water upwards that just tiny bit more in order to give you that extra room to account for the evaporation of the mash. Now, some of you are probably thinking, Larry, just put the darn lid on the thing and forget the whole mash ton uh, evaporation rate entirely. But as I touched on a little earlier, uh, some systems don't recommend doing it. So go ahead and do it if you are comfortable. Um, I wasn't so comfortable doing it with the uh, Spike Solo because I almost did have an overflow once uh, last year. I don't know if I even showed it on camera or not in hindsight, but uh, I did. I know it happened once where the mash basket started to compact a little bit too much from recirculating at too fast of a rate and the water level started climbing and climbing inside that basket um, and it was running dry down below by the coils or the uh, heating element but I caught it because I was looking for it, see? So if I had the lid on, it would have maybe overflowed and sloshed all over the floor and maybe burnt out the element, who knows, right? So that's why uh, Spike doesn't have you do it. As far as Blickman, I don't know. Uh, they have the auto sparge arm. You really, um, what, once you dial that thing in and you trust it, I don't see why you couldn't just put the lid on, which I, which I still may do in the future. But it's less important now to me that I do or don't because I can now account for that rate if I do choose to leave it off going forward. I hope this information was helpful to you. It certainly was to me. It was eye-opening. I learned something, and I'm sharing what I've learned with you, and hopefully it'll, it'll help you too. I hope to do more of these kind of videos uh, in the near future, uh, some more dialing in of your system videos like I did just recently with the uh, last two with the grain absorption rate, the hop absorption rate, and now this one about the mash evaporation rate. I got a few more ideas in mind at least. I'm going to work on those and hopefully get them out to you sometime this winter or spring if it so happens to be that way. All right, so thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all later.